We are making a junk journal from scratch. In my last video, I have shown you how I came from this little basket with embroidery threads to a whole concept for my journal. I have built a mood board on a separate table here in my craft room to draw inspiration and ideas and also to have the materials I want to use at hand during my process of making the journal. In this video, I want to take the paper material that I have chosen and also some other things to see what I can do with these so that they later on fit perfectly into my journal. So we are going to talk about some things <laughs> that you can throw onto your paper and also to other materials to make them interesting and unique so that you later on have your very own papers and other materials that you can put into your journal. In the end of this video I also want to start building the signatures for my journal to get a better overview over everything because what I have here at the moment is just you know some stuff <laughs> and I want to have like a first idea idea of how my journal could look later. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel and I'm really excited to do this today because this is always something where I'm yeah I'm I'm really excited to do that because this is the first step that gives the journal some kind of a character already even if we only have paper and some other materials here in front of us but what I try to do today is to get like this vibe of the journal into my brain and into my body somehow. <laughs> if you have missed the other video uh, with the mood board, then please check out the info box of this video. I have linked the video down below there for you. And if you watch this video perhaps later, meaning not at the day when I have published it, then you will find a whole playlist there as well so that you can watch all of the videos that belong to this little series I'm having here on my channel. So what do we have here? We have the papers that we have chosen additionally to the printable I have chosen for my journal, or these are actually two printables. It's um, the, the embroidery paper volume one and stitched is the name of the other printable I have chosen. I have printed the stitched papers to the back of my papers here and the um, embroidery papers to the other side. If you are in interested in these printables, you can find the links down below in the description box as well. And what I am doing now is I want to separate these a little bit because this is a lot and as you perhaps know I always need an English and a German video <laughs> so I will take only a few of these and a few of my printables and then we are going to do the technique and I do the same stuff in my German video and then probably I have um, papers left over because this is really a lot and then I will do like the same techniques and the same idea on the rest of the papers without the camera so that you can then see them in my upcoming videos. So that means I want to take some of these but I also want to have a cool variation so that you can also see the different materials and how they react to what I want to do here today. So the first thing I like to do is I like to take one of my printable pages here or a printed pages here as a reference for the size because um, this is DNA4 that is the size of paper I have here in Austria and um, I want to have a lot of the pages in my journal later on in this size. Uh, this is called DNA5 and this is the half of DNA4. Yeah? So a lot of people ask me about that, what that means when I say DNA5. That means this is DNA4 and the half, this, is now DNA5. It's a little confusing, but <laughs> this is what I have here. And like the bigger pages in my journal, or mm, no, the maximum size of the pages in my journal shall be this here and fold it in half. Then this, do you know what I mean? So I want to take these papers here and check if they are bigger and if yes, I want to make them smaller so that they don't get bigger than this is. So I use this as a reference and I check if this is good. Yeah, this is a tiny little bit bigger in height, but that is okay for me. It can be a little, you know, 
irregular, but I don't want to have two big pages. What is the width here? Yeah. So I go through all of these. And if there is something that is bigger, for example, this one here, then I just take it. And let's see, where can we tear it? The width is okay, but the height is too much. So I really like to do that, you know, the fastest and the easiest way in my eyes is to just fold it and then tear it off. Of course, you could take a paper trimmer and trim this off, but I like to do it just like this so that this also gets not so regular. We don't throw this away, but we put that back into the mood board because this is cool collage material for later. So I put that to my mood board table there. So this is okay. We have here, this is probably the same problem because it's from the same magazine. So I will quickly go through all of my papers and bring them into approximately DNA 4 size. And when I have something like this paper bag here, I can also already decide if I want to use something like this here to build a pocket later. Because look, this is like a little annoying. <laughs> And I would have to iron this to make it flat. But uh, why can't I just leave this here and think, oh, nice pocket. Imagine we would glue or sew it here on the top and the bottom. Then we would have a really nice pocket here. Imagine this is folded in half here. And then we would also have this cool thing. So that you still can see later that this is a pocket, um, that this was, sorry, yeah, it is a pocket, sorry, that this was a paper bag. So I like to leave this in this folded way to have a reminder so that I later know I want to turn this into a pocket. This is a relatively thin material and I could make this mm, into several different pages by tearing this here. But I'm thinking I've just uh, taken this and I've torn it in half, as you can see. Um, before I did that, it was like one piece, but I'm just thinking, shall we perhaps try to leave these layers like they are so that they can't move and can't go apart and do what we want to do in the next step with this whole thing so that we then mm, I want to work with some wet mediums in a second and I'm hoping that perhaps the stuff soaks through these layers and we get different impressions of the technique by the fact that this is layered and it perhaps soaks through the layers. Uh, I will tell you in a second what I mean by that. Uh, let's try that. <laughs> so let's not tear that completely apart. So next I want to choose some of my papers and I just lay them down to my table really randomly and also a little bit overlapping. That seems a little weird. I know. <laughs> But this is a method I found out for myself, which is for me really relaxing on the one hand, time saving on the other hand. And in my eyes, this gives a really nice variety of paper later. I mean, we already have a variety of paper, but with the techniques I want to do on here, I also get a variety then when I do it like this. So let's just, you can see I have chosen 
for example, only one of these patterns, one of these, one of the magazine pages and so on, one of my printable pages. I take one of my sewing papers and so on, uh, sewing pattern papers and so on, so that I have already a variety of paper here. I will do my technique on here, then um, put everything aside, take the next papers, do another technique and so on, so that we then later on have a lot of different papers and hopefully interesting papers. And for me it's always a good idea to start with the more uncontrollable things and things where I think that could turn into a fail. So let's start with that. In the end of my last video I have said that I thought about some rust when I looked to my mood board somehow rust came to my mind. So I want to try something. I have made a little rust water here by taking a bigger jar with some rusty pieces in there. I've put some water in here and some white vinegar and I've left this for a couple of days and then I ended up with this rusty water here. If you can't handle rust for whatever reason, health-wise or whatever, of course you could take um, coffee instead of this or you could also take any other liquid medium you could take a spray or some watercolor or dirty paint brush water or whatever yeah it doesn't have to be rust water but i want to try something um with this water in combination with coffee because um i have learned that when you have rust water and then you take um coffee and mix that on the paper you get the most amazing results and it turns really black-ish and I like that and somehow I like this contrast to the embroidery th theme of my journal even if we have you know um, built a really wide interpretation of embroidery you have seen that in the last video <clears throat> so I'm um, taking this instant coffee here and mix that here into my water so this was just normal water it is uh, by the way also cold water <laughs> now this look this looks le nearly the same that is also funny and uh, how do we do this we could just throw it on we could spray it what do we want to do i also have taken out some stencils uh, shall we first do some e really easy things? I think so. So I think I need two different paintbrushes for this. Um, or, yeah, also, uh, also, that is German, I'm so sorry. I don't want to go with one paintbrush from one um, glass, glass into the other because then my liquid turns black. So this is the rust, this is the coffee. Let's start with the rust this rusty water and normally this should do the following thing there where only the rust water is it should turn orange somehow and when coffee meets this rusty water it should turn black and I think with my digitals and also with this combination of the embroidery paper printable and the stitched printable and that is already a re really big contrast I thought it could be good to have some pages where we have this contrast again and perhaps that is also a nice addition to the color palette in the other video we have talked about the red and the blue in the beginning of my process of making the mood board, I thought I want to have a really neutral color palette and stay with neutral colors. And then you have seen how my mind has changed. And I have decided in the end that I want to have the red and the blue in my journal. But I also need somehow a connection because red and blue, that is in my brain still a little weird. And I'm hoping that I can get a connection with what I'm doing here. Um, with this kind of uh, technique <clears throat> so we have the rust water here and now I'm wondering if this coffee mixture is already intense enough but let's see 
Yeah, can you see? As soon as I splatter with coffee to these, it turns black there where the coffee meets the rust. And this takes a while and you can see it, it I think you can watch how it turns more and more black. <laughs> I'm just wondering because I have never done this before. Yeah, perhaps I should have said that as well. I've just seen that in videos. So um, I'm wondering how long does it take until this reaction between the coffee and the rust happens and how dark is this going to become? I want it yeah, pretty dark and I'm wondering if I should add more coffee here into my mixture or if I just have to wait. I don't know. But mm, with starting with these kind of experiments, because I mean, I have never done this before. I don't know what is going to happen here and I don't know if I will like this in the end. But this is also something to come into the process. And we've talked about that in the last video. If you want to make a junk journal from scratch, it can happen. And especially if you have never done it before, that you can't come into this process and that you get already stuck before you you even have started. And I want to avoid that. Mm, I want to avoid sitting in front of my papers and not knowing what to do or getting overwhelmed or something. And this kind of like easy stuff is a good point in my eyes to start and to come into the process because here nothing can't get wrong yeah it can happen that i don't like the papers in the end but yeah and then i put them into my stash and uh, take them for another journal what shall happen it's just paper but with this easy stuff i don't have to think so much i don't don't have to think about uh arrangements or color combinations or whatever i can just throw my stuff here to the paper and see what happens and that makes that i that I already am in the process without this, yeah, without even realizing that I'm in the process. Do you know what I mean? So this is really dark and I think it is already dark enough for what I want to have because I'm assuming when this is dry, then it is it gets even darker. <sighs> so that means we have to either wait a little bit and let this dry or... What we also could do is we could take some of our other papers that we have here and just throw them on top. Why not? <laughs> Sounds weird? I think it is weird. Mm, I know that this will be come like background-ish. Yeah? I don't want to have these like really extreme crazy splatters there. And it helps when you then just throw something on top because then the back side of these can soak the medium from here which is too much it dries faster that way and you get results that you can't control because you don't know what's going to happen here because you know you can't see it <laughs> and that is good in my eyes i really like to do something like this and the other thing is um, you can of course now already go on and you don't have to wait for this stuff to dry because here you have your new playing surface <laughs> you can go on so let's try to take the stencils we've chosen for this project and for, for this journal um, these I have just taken out from the mood board I want to place them just somewhere I try to not think about this huh? <laughs> that is also interesting can you see that here oh my goodness this reacts really funny here it stays white where the pattern of the other side is that is weird we will see if that stays there or if it changes when it's dry but that doesn't matter we go on <laughs> so let's take some of the rust water 
and just try to brush this through the stencil even if I know that this is going to become probably only or oh, only is perhaps the wrong word this is going to become a loose impression of this or just a, a blob yeah I don't know we will see I want to throw this on here and see just see what happens without thinking without especially without overthinking and if we get something concrete from the stencil pattern nice and if not then also nice <laughs> And in this step, I also like to mm, use my things, for example, tools like stencils, in a little different way than I would normally do that. I mean, normally you would think, take the stencil, take some ink or texture paste or acrylic paint and stencil through that to get a really nice impression from the stencil. But that is not the goal here. The goal is to get something interesting, no matter if I can see the pattern of the stencil later or not. No matter if it gets totally abstract or perhaps I just have like a dark area here without any pattern. It doesn't matter. I want to come into this and I want to let the materials and all this stuff speak to me. This is also a way for me to get more ideas for what's coming next. Because um, since I don't know what is going to happen here, I don't know what will come to my mind. And I have to let that come automatically somehow. And hmm, especially in those situations where you don't really know what to do, it helps to just do something where you think, what am I doing here? Yeah? <laughs> if you ask yourself, what am I doing here? And you have no answer. That is in my eyes really good <laughs> because <laughs> that brings the most interesting papers in the end. And even if this looks really really weird it i mean this kind of technique has never disappointed me i was always um satisfied with the result no matter with which mediums i have done this i mean um this is the first time i use coffee and rust but also with watercolors or acrylic paint or whatever i have used just so you know what i had at hand it never disappointed but you also don't know what's going to happen <laughs> that's good so I will throw this on here and I don't want to have all of my pages with the coffee and the rust thing so I will let these dry I think I will take my heat gun to help this so that it gets a little uh, you know that it dries faster and then I want to think about some other mediums to throw onto the other pages so that that <clears throat> not everything later on has this kind of style so I will splatter a little bit more here with my rust water and then I will dry everything so this is all completely dry now but before I go on I would like to take this little thing here and throw some of my fabric and lace materials in here to also give them a little crunch with the coffee and the rust water. Let's then throw a little bit of the rust water in here. So let's, let's just take the rest of this because I think this needs to soak so that everything gets wet and with that stained. So I throw the rest of my coffee on here as well. This has turned already really black, but that is normal. Um, I guess uh, the, you know, the rust from when I painted over the stencils and so on, it a little bit got in here into the coffee and it's already black, but that doesn't matter. It gives a nice color here as well. 
and then this can sit for a while and I think I will perhaps I will even leave this overnight um, I will take a look at this in between and then decide what I do with this but why am I doing this that's easy I want to have these materials become the same colors like we have on the uh, papers here so that everything fits nicely together in the end and now we can of course look at what we got here I'm really really amazed <laughs> these turned out really cool this is just something like unspectacular but we also have some more interesting things look here for example we have this tiny fragment of the stenciling and this is what makes junk journaling so cool in my eyes because these little details are what um, makes your junk journal interesting in the end that's my opinion but you know everything I say here is only my opinion um, you can see that totally different of course but this is really cool so I'm trying to figure out which pages I want to leave like they are now and which I want to alter even more. This here, for example, I really don't like that. In the camera, well, that is strange. In the first second when I started my sentence, I just looked to this, you know, with my eyes directly to the paper and then I... Um, went with my view to my iPad which mirrors my phone and um, there I can see what you see at the moment <laughs> that are two different worlds that is really strange when I look to my iPad and when I look what you see at the moment I really like it but when I look to the paper directly I don't like it mm, what are we going to do in such a moment we take this and put this aside so I will separate this pile of papers now here there are the papers that I want to alter even more and here what am I doing so this goes here as well and here I want to put the papers that I want to leave like they are because I'm sure here are some papers which I want to leave exactly like they are what about this I, I really like how this turned out it gives the page a whole different vibe 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 i always have problems with this word but i think some stamping could be great here this i think i like as it is let's see what else do we have where is my stenciling when i uh, dried these i could see that a lot of the pages have some interesting patterns I really like this so this stays as it is and of course you could leave everything what you have here now like it is you don't need to <clears throat> do the next steps if you already like what you have this turned out also really cool I mean this is I mean this is a starting point yeah if you have never made a junk journal before then you probably think what the heck is she doing there and why is she amazed by such a mess <laughs> but for example this page this is a really good example for what I'm doing here this gives me so many more possibilities for the future steps which I didn't have with the plain paper here you can see the stenciling this came out really really great this already screams like put some tape here onto this like straight line or sew along these shapes here we got some of the stencil impressions here as well these were these little roses and even if you can't see these roses clearly they are there and they give interest and i'm totally in love with these things here but this mm, there here I uh, have taken the paintbrush and I made these little marks and then I splattered the coffee on top and as you can see here happened different things on the one hand this pink line from the ledger paper has yeah has been reactivated somehow it bleeded a little bit ah uh, bleeded it's not the past it bled a little bit I guess <laughs> um, and that gives of course a nice color here but I'm really in love with these shapes here that look so so interesting and also this crisp 
outline here. I really like that. Cool space for tiny journaling also. But I think it's also because of this paper that this happened. It's relatively... Uh, can't. I can't say that it's it's nearly uh, I I can't I can't even bring that into German words. You have you would have to feel that. I think it soaks not so extremely like for example such a thinner paper and the medium stays more on the surface and that's why we got these cool effects because mm, it dried without soaking into the paper, I guess. So this will definitely stay as it is. Or shall we? No, 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 no. We leave this here. Mm, this is also really amazing. We got some really, really um, subtle impression here from the stenciling. And this one, that was the stencil with these bigger round holes. Uh, and the smaller holes, this one here. And this turned out really nice. Really abstract, of course, but nice. And here you can see that as well, like on this other paper there, these shapes from the paintbrush, they stayed nearly in the shape where, um, like they have been when I uh, went over this. And this, ah, this color combination, it's just great. It's just great. Okay, so here we also have some of the pattern of the stencil. That is really cool. Look, uh, that was this stencil here. And here it's really like it wants to be one with the pattern that was on the page here before, this black pattern here. And I really, really like that. But let's think about <clears throat> what we could do with the papers that we want to alter even more so i take these which i want to leave like they are and place them back into my mood board so that they can stay there and that i can't get confused and now of course no matter what we do here now we create um an even bigger variation of what we had before so that means you have some papers that are in this stage if you alter these now in the same way like we've done it before you got got another uh, you will get another variation of papers if you then repeat this whole stuff you will get even more variations and so on and that makes every paper unique even if every paper is already unique but at this stage we like only have used the rust water and the coffee yeah so that is like the basic stuff or how can i say that even if I like these papers and I, you know, I could leave them like they are. There's no problem with leaving them exactly like they are. Um, but I like to go further because, not not because why, um, not, um, it's not that I think this is boring or so. But the more I add, um, the more ideas I also get. For, for example, where to put my pockets, where to put my belly bands, where to put my tuck spots later. So, for example, where was this page? Mm, let me quickly pick that up again. For example, this page here already gave me some ideas. Yeah, I said, for example, sewing along here or taping it here or journaling here that are already ideas which were given to me by what I have here. And to have more of those associations, what I could do with those pages, I want to add more here to get more ideas so that the paper starts really like speaking to me. <laughs> so let's see, what can we do? I want to lay these down here, nearly like I did it before, but not so extremely. Um, I mean, I will not layer them now. I just want to see what I have here and I want to work a little fast so that I can get a lot of paper at once. So, in one step. So this was the paper where we have this like really subtle impression of this stencil. And here, 
it's a little empty <coughs> and it's light here so I'm thinking why don't we try to take this dirty stencil and a little bit of texture paste <coughs> I'm going to use the texture paste opaque by Tim Holtz and Ranger and I'm hoping that I get some of this dirt here Ooh. from the stencil to the paper. Ah, now my media mat is ending there and it's <laughs> holy cow. Let's make a little mess here. Try to get this really thin because I don't know how the paper is going to react to the paste and I don't want to have a crumpled paper in the end because this paper is not so thick and when texture paste dries perhaps you know that it shrinks down Holy cow, don't know if that is the right word, but it can happen that the paper doesn't stay flat. And of course, the thinner you make it, the more you have from your medium. Yeah, so the, you, the more you can get out of such a jar and the quicker it dries, of course. That is really cool. I think I like that. The page is going to be like this in the end in the journal so we will see yeah that is good i think so i will put this aside to try can we repeat this perhaps somewhere because i still have a little bit of texture paste here on my palette knife and i can't put that back into my jar because then i would bring the rust or whatever is here on my palette knife now into the jar and of course I don't want to do that. Don't want to ruin my paste. And I'm now hoping that perhaps we get like a tiny reaction from the dirt here on here but I can already see that this is really like white it's white <laughs> meaning no rust and dirt has come off here and probably mm, this white impression is what we get <laughs> can we perhaps mm, let's take this one can we perhaps just Uh, I wish sometimes I wish I was a scientist because then I would probably now know what to do I'm just going to clean my palette knife to take a little more of the texture paste I'm cleaning this to make sure that I don't get any dirt from here into my jar because I now want to try what happens if I take a tiny little bit of water, let me think, spritz that to this side of the stencil because here is the main dirt. Um, put this on here with the water facing me and then try to get this through here, hoping that the dirt comes off from the stencil hopefully I will not ruin my paste here now I don't know what happens if you <laughs> mix this up with water don't know how this is going to dry but we will see we get what we get but it's not getting dirty that is interesting okay we've learned something but it looks nice and <laughs> this this stencil fits really well to this Oki um, pattern okay 
I mean, does that mean that my stencil is going to look forever like this? Is it now stained for forever? Hopefully not. Ah. <laughs> Let's see. No, I can't clean it off. Okay. I think it will stay a little bit stained, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I will put this in water so that the texture paste on here can't dry and that it perhaps gets a little cleaner with the time and in the water. And then we can go on. And what we also could try is, I, I had something in my mind, I thought, but now I, now, now I don't have any of the rust and coffee thing left. So let me try to do it with the rest here. Because I thought I want to try to stamp with this mixture, but I'm afraid to use my rubber stamps because I don't know what happens like with the chemical reaction of these ingredients here on my rubber stamps. I don't want to do that, but I have these little stamps. I have shown them to you in the last video. I have made them by myself with some die cuts during one of the years of Defam Ramba, which is a December daily series with my friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. And I thought, because they are falling apart, because of my <laughs> weird construction, I thought perhaps I can stamp with these just for testing if we will see anything here. Because here nothing can happen. I mean, they are like destroyed anyway. So why can't I try this? Well, this gets really abstract. Mm. Let me try this one. Perhaps this is also not the right medium to do this. It's very liquid, but if I don't try it, I can't know if it can work. And even if I only get a few like tiny, tiny things here, it's okay. It's totally okay. Here you can even see the bird. We could even take later some other mediums to stamp over this again and use this as a shadow, for example, for the birds. But yeah, we've just learned that that can't work. <laughs> it's okay. So we know that. <laughs> But I, somehow I like this, this faded thing. Can we perhaps do something like this here, but with another tool? I don't want to give up on getting the dirt off from here. So let's try if we can somehow get that off or if we can somehow perhaps reactivate this with another medium to get like the negative impression of this let's first try to spritz a little bit of water let's see if that comes off oh <laughs> if we then can yeah look oh that is what I was looking for. So that we get some of this like faded stuff to the background as well, so that the birds are not so alone here on the bottom. And we had this little thinner paper. So let's try to get the rest on here. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Again, this might look strange. <laughs> but this, I think, will turn out really nice. And you can see these are getting already darker. So I will leave these and 
uh, this paper and uh, let these um, areas air dry because I think then the reaction of the rust and the water, the rust and the water, the rust and the coffee, I'm sorry, is more extreme than if I would use my air uh, hot, how is that called? Here, this tool, holy cow, I have problems to find words today. Um, here, let's try something. Because we could even think about the birds and <clears throat> let's try to make a little space for the bird. Approximately like this. Like a really abstract nest or something. And this might seem, you know, my brain now thinks completely crisscross, I think, is a good word for that. It can happen that I think something really concrete, like, let's make a nest for the bird, or something really abstract, or I think in one second about... How can I get some, something from this? In the next second, I can think I want to stamp. In the next second, I can think uh, I want to sew over my pages or whatever. And this is not only hard to explain, but I think it's important that you find your own way of doing this and to get a knowledge about how your own brain works. Because... This can never be a tutorial, yeah, because every brain works differently and in every brain there happen different things, of course, and I think it's impossible to uh, <laughs> to bring that into like a tutorial style thing, video. And if... You do something and you think oh, that um, I have seen that there and there and there. All the people are doing it like that. And then you do it and you think it doesn't work for me. Don't give up. Then it's just not the right way for your brain and, and for, your pro Ooh, for your process. But then you can probably find another way that works better for you. And that would not work for the <laughs> the other people you have seen. Excuse me, but what is this? <laughs> Can you see this really crazy dimensional eye, which came by pressing this thing into the texture paste, and then you know it? Oh my goodness! Uh, then I'm, I'm so sorry. Then the texture paste went into this little hole here, and now it has the shape of the hole. And do you know what? It obviously didn't stamp so well here, but can you see how well it stamped there where the texture paste is? No, I have never done that before. No, I don't know what will happen in the next second. But this gave me the idea to take this and press this into the wet paste. And I would have never, 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 never come to the idea to do that without having this and without the idea, you know, making a nest for the bird and so on. So that means... It, it can never be a tutorial what I'm doing here. It can, can only be something that encourages you to try different things and to see what works for you and what not. And oh my goodness, has anyone tried 
to I have I think I think I have never seen what I'm thinking right in this moment and that is you often ask me where do you get your ideas from yeah and where how do you um, come up with video ideas or tutorial ideas or uh, things like I want to show you this or this or that trick exactly like this this is something that happened after this happened after the stenciling happened after <laughs> this layer of coffee and rust happened and then suddenly sometimes something like this happens and my brain is like lighting up somehow and then I think something like I think in this moment because look uh, even if I thought I can press the texture paste down like here look the the uh, head of the bird has pressed the texture paste down completely and it's clearly visible there the black of the ink is clearly visible there as the bird head and it's it's flat here obviously the paste was already a little bit too dry but there is no black ink on the background can you see that so that brings me to the following idea we need a medium light paper this is too light a stencil which has a lot of you know like this one not so many um, uh, I will show you not so many tiny things but more solid and bigger areas where is the stencil now let's try that I want to know if that works what is in my head now and if that works that would also work with normal stamps and not only with these crazy ones and this is of course also something that I can't plan yeah I don't know in, in this moment I don't even know how my video title will be <laughs> I mean, I know it approximately, yeah, but um, that is always not so easy because I ha mm, when I experience something like this, I have to follow it. I can't ignore that only because I make a video here. That is not possible for me. You have to go through this. <laughs> because if I would ignore this, I would stop my own creativity and I think that can't be good. So, I've tried to get this through here, thin, but mm, without any texture or so. So, I tried to get this really, mm, I think, equally on there. Don't know if that is the word. Then, I'm going to dry this. Yes, I do that with my heat gun because I can't wait. Normally, I would let this air dry to make sure that the paste doesn't get bubbles but in this case I want to go on so I will quickly dry this completely okay so this is completely dry now my stamp here is a little bit dirty that is probably not so good so let's try to remove this this is just a little of the texture paste from the stamping before and now I want to try two things first I want to try it with this stamp again and then I want to try to take another stamp like a normal rubber stamp why the heck I mean it worked but why the heck is this here now on my stamp um, what I was thinking is that now <laughs> can you see the stamping is only on the texture paste and not on the background that looks really interesting have you ever seen that before I mean <laughs> this is not so nice but that's because the paste got stuck to my stamp so let's try this with 
another stamp. I've chosen um, a stamp set which was not on my mood board because this is solid. These are the Wildflowers by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. CMS 253 is the number. Why is this block so big? Uh, what am I doing here? Because I thought, um, I mean, the technique itself worked, but can we try this please with a stamp that the most people have instead of taking this what perhaps only I have, <laughs> because you haven't made something like that. Let's see. Hopefully the paste will not stick to the stamp. Yeah, look, it works. <laughs> that looks so, so interesting. And even if I have this birdie fail here, I think I can just take one of my die cuts because I have made this stamp with the help of the Silhouette Birds by Tim Holtz and Zizix. And even if I have cut that here and the shape of the original die cut is not what I have here on my stamp, I think I can just take a die cut later of the bird and just um, place that over here or I can cover this little fail up with something else so this paper is not lost that's what I'm trying to say <clears throat> and again we have learned something new let's make more of this I don't know how I hard I have how hard I have to press I think it would be better to stay to oh I can't speak today to take a stamping platform so that you can control that better but this looks really interesting and even if you can't find a solution for your fail if you have one you could still take this and use that as collage fodder later. I mean, if you have used the same stenciling here, like on other pages, you still have this connection with the pattern to the other pages you've made. And you could, of course, also cut this into pieces and use that in a collage without this stuff here from the bird, which looks not so nice. Or you could take this and turn this into a pocket and glue something over here or just cut that part off. And then you would have a really nice thing, I would say. And I'm just thinking, yeah, I think it works the best when you have a contrast be between the texture paste and the stamping, meaning the black and white here, and something like brown or so which is like a light brown in the background or a, another light color so that you get a really nice contrast and we also get a connection with this page to those black and white elements we've chosen and we have already had them in the mood board and you can see this now is another element that fits into this idea of having the black and yeah white or brown contrast and since we have these on the desk here now, um, let's also talk about the smaller things we have. I mean, I am definitely not finished with these papers yet, but um, I want to hop in between of the things I have on my desk so that I get a really nice variety and that I can follow my ideas um, intuitively somehow. So it's not important that you stay with these papers. If you don't have more ideas for these, then stop and go on with other things. I mean, I would have more ideas here, but I want to show you different things in this video here as well, of course. So let's also take the smaller pieces here. So these are, on the one hand, these like tiny, tinier uh, map pieces. I mean, tiny compared to the other pages, the full pages. Um, 
And now I think we should also think about how we want to use these things in the journal. For example, the paper bags. I want to open them so that we get nice pockets and I want to avoid bulk. So this bottom part here, I want to open that. And here's even <laughs> some stuff inside. I will quickly empty that. This, so that we can open this. Like so. And then let's see where we can fold it so that it makes sense. So here's my reference page. I think yeah, that works. Here is already a fold, and if I use that to avoid more folds, then this... Oh, oh, what is this? Oh no, Barbara had stapled this. Oh my goodness, my finger. Ah, come out. What is this? Ah, little bitch. <laughs> Ah, come out! Okay, so then we have it like so, because in this case, when I have these special things, which I have only one time, like this paper bag from Barbara, then I like to think about the direction in which I want to use it in the journal now, because that also determines perhaps a little bit what I do on here now. Well, this is a good width for this thing here. I thought we could perhaps turn that into something like a pouch, but that is then really thick. I think I would prefer taking it like this. That already looks really cool, so that we then on the other side have something like this which is still a pocket and like it looks like a pouch somehow we could later on add a closure here yeah i think that is a good idea so let's place this here like so this here we could also include like this even if this is really small but i think i like that and we won't lose um, one of the sides if we do it like that and here it really doesn't matter so let's see what else could we do we could of course take some distress ink or oxide ink or something similar and a stencil shall we try no I can't now I can't take these dirty stencils anymore because uh, then I would ruin my ink pad probably so let's take just a fresh stencil let's see if we can find something that matches here with the theme I think I would like some something like this Ooh. that could be good we are talking about an embroidery journal don't we measurements are perhaps important <laughs> that is a weird association I know but um, that doesn't matter here it is important that you, in my eyes, important that you make a decision. Not, It's not about what you do, but that you do it. Yeah. So because we want to start to come into this and how do we do that? We have to start and I often said that the people who say just start, just do it. I understand that and it's uh, a fact that <laughs> I also said that. But you also perhaps experienced that it is not so easy to like really just do it. I mean, if you don't know what to do, how can you do it then? And in this case, I think even if no one else can understand why you are doing this, it is important that you do it. And with those even weird decisions, 
you have something here then and this looks really cool and with that you can of course also come to ideas which you won't have without letting these weird ideas come to your mind And um, if, if you are new to junk journaling, you might think, what is this? Um, this is like crazy, because what, what shall this be? Um, this is only, again, I mean, I feel like a broken record, but this is just a starting point. And it's just something that gives us ideas for the next steps. It's not a finished page, even if I want to make some signatures after I have done this here um, to get an imagination of or an idea of what, no, an idea about how my journal could look in the end. And that is also only a first idea that I will get then. But this is just the starting point. It is nothing finished. And sometimes I think it's hard to realize and accept that because uh, when we sit down and we craft, sometimes we perhaps have this feeling that we have to end the day with something finished. But I think that is not important. We can also have some un uh, some unfinished things on our desk. Why not? Who says that we have to finish it? <laughs> and some things also take a little bit of time, of course. And uh, sometimes you also ask, how long does it take you to make a journal? That is always so hard to answer because sometimes it goes really fast and I have a journal finished in within a week or so. And sometimes it takes me months because one idea leads me to the next idea. And yeah, that is normal. And when you can accept that it is normal, I think that is a good thing because then you can relax and just do this and with... Um, it, when you are relaxed you can also find more ideas and more things you want to do I think hmm. I want to find another stencil that could work this could also work I have seen oh some patterns oh, oh my goodness what happened here now oh these things only happen when the camera is recording i'm so sorry um i, I think i had I have seen a page with an embroidered piece which had these things so why don't we use that i'm just thinking do i want to stamp as well and if yes how and well, <laughs> and when your brain jumps through the different possibilities, in this case, when I think, do I want to stamp while I'm stenciling, that is probably also a good thing, because then um, if you think okay I want to stamp and then you stamp <laughs> after stenciling for example then you also get a variation to your papers and different things which are not all the same just by following your brain that wants to jump in between of techniques and mediums and so on and I think that's a good thing this looks good Okay, we have that. Uh, what to do? What to do with this dragonfly? I think I want to have 
some of this on here. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, that is nice. Perhaps a little bit more here. <laughs> Barbara would say, <laughs> shall we stamp or what shall we do now <laughs> uh, it's also not so easy for me to bring all of this stuff in into one video because normally this would take um, more longer time to do this if I would do this without the camera I mean and it's not so easy to think about what I can do here to show you a good variety of what you could do. So let's see. Perhaps we, we should just stamp. You know what? This, pe this page speaks to me somehow. Because this is so extremely blue. And I miss some contrast here somehow. Hmm. I will go to my mood board and pick up the stamps we have chosen for this journal. Okay, so this is probably a little bit too filigree. From this set we wanted to use these. Ah, this, this somehow speaks butterflies, I think, because this is already so floral, so it would make perhaps no sense to use like flowers like this one here from the specimen set CMS 410 I'm just thinking could also be a good idea to emboss the stamp impression but the paper is not so flat. I have ironed the, my papers after I dried them, but as you can see, they are not so flat, and I think that embossing is not so good. Where is my reference page? Because this butterfly is really big. Yeah, I have to stay close to the edge and then fold that later, not in the middle. Or we stamp him here and then fold the page in the middle so that we have one wing on one page and the other wing on the other page. Oh, that, that could be a nice idea. Let's find the middle. Otherwise... He has not so much space. Let's stamp him here. And I'm just thinking I want to use my stamping platform because I'm really afraid that this goes wrong. So let's put this here. Ooh. <laughs> put this here. Then see what we can get here.
<laughs> okay, now I have to make a really fast decision because this is, this is not so visible. To be honest, I I hate this. I really hate this. But Let's try to use the stamping ink to attach embossing powder. And let's try to emboss him, even if I thought it's not a good idea because the paper is not completely flat. But what can happen? <laughs> it sticks really well. So let me quickly take my heat tool and melt the powder. I think that was a good decision even if we probably won't see every single detail we can see the butterfly now and before I did this he was like nearly invisible and now yeah this got really solid but it's okay it's it's okay I think I, I think this is not perfect, but it is something that we can use to work with in the next steps. Okay. <sighs> I don't want to end this thing with having something like this. <laughs> so, let's do some more stamping. And by the way, this has nearly dried in the meantime. Look how cool these birds came out. Holy moly, and this is just amazing. Look, to be honest, I haven't expected that. They have been so, so light in the beginning, and now they look like this. It's it's just cool. Does anyone know if I would ruin my rubber stamps when I um, would, if I would stamp with this coffee and rust water mixture? Mm. Be really interested in, in knowing that because I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> Let's see. Can we? I mean, we've just used gold. I think that is a really nice connection with the blue here. But we haven't talked about gold before. We haven't talked about the like additional colors before except the blue and the red we we've decided that we want to have blue and red additionally to the neutral colors but what what is this i mean this is gold shall we use more gold or shall we leave this as an accent here gold can never be a mistake i think what if we try to stamp these here and then emboss them with gold as well i think that could look really nice on this pattern here But in this case, I want to use embossing ink instead of black. So I'm going to apply that with my embossing dabber to the stamp and then I stamp and emboss that with the golden powder. Mm -hmm. 
I think that was a good decision with the gold. This looks really cool. And I like how it breaks these straight lines of the sewing pattern. That is good. I like that. can already see the page here and perhaps a pocket here. First I thought I want to stamp that um, so that the flowers are like a full background here but why shall I do this? This uh, here that the stamping ends here can give me the next idea to just you know put a pocket here. If I would have the whole stamping here I would probably think I don't want to cover the stamping up and I would not put the pocket here. Yeah so <sighs> I like this stamp. Can we perhaps, when we, I mean I have it here, can we perhaps stamp it somewhere else as well? Perhaps onto another page. Mm. What about this one? But here, I don't know if I want to have the gold here as well. Can that look good? Let's try it. Don't know. We will see. Oh. Oh oh. <laughs> Shit. I'm assuming. Oh oh oh. <laughs> this paper soaks really extremely. I'm hoping that I can get a nice impression here and make this work because sometimes when paper is too porous I think that's the right English word then the embossing ink soaks into the paper so fast that you don't get a nice embossed impression in the end but let's see let's do two layers of the embossing ink and then as quick as we can Throw the powder on here. And hope for the best. Looks pretty good. Oh, it works. Oh, that's just wonderful. I thought the powder will soak completely into the paper. Have you experienced that? That when you emboss something on a really, like, you know, soaking paper, I don't know how I can say that, then you can't feel the embossing later anymore, but it is like completely flat then. Yeah. And if I would uh, put more heat on here, it would happen. Here, when I go over this, I can see the powder is beginning to turn matte. I mean, now it's it's staying like it is, of course, because I stopped melting it. But if I would put more heat on here, then everything would get completely matte and flat. Here it's, it's like nearly flat and it's also somehow mad but it's okay I mean we can still see the flower yeah so but I, I think I could not live with an accident on the back of this paper <laughs> so okay when we have that I think I want to stop here now um, because I think you got the idea of what I have done here today the next thing I want to do is I want to take my papers and fold them in half and I do this here now for the sake of the video. That doesn't mean that I don't work on these papers further. Yeah, So I do this so that you can see what I do and what I would do without the camera but that doesn't mean that these pages stay like they are. But I want to show you 
how you can get this idea, this first idea of how your journal could look in the end. Because now, at the moment, we have some loose pages and nothing else. And to get an idea how it would look when we flip through the journal, in my eyes, it really helps to fold your pages and <clears throat> put them like so to your table or you could of course also now build signatures so meaning if you have something like this here now and that is not all and of course i also still have the pages from the german video which will also go uh, into this thing here Oh, this is still, oh, this is still, it's not dry. Let's take some of these. And of course it can happen, I mean, you know I sell my journals, yeah, and this might already seem to be, if you imagine the double amount of this, because I have uh, the other pages from the German video, then imagine it is a lot already. And we don't have any embellishments or pockets or something like that yet. But as you perhaps know, I sell my journals, meaning if I have too much, that is not the big deal. Yeah, Then I have some pages for my next journals. And I think uh, you should see that the same better. You have to, in my eyes, it's better to, ha to have more than enough than not enough. <laughs> because if you have the motivation to like make a really giant and fat and nice journal, <laughs> then you need pages, of course, and you need materials. And if you have not enough, that can be frustrating. If you have too much, you have more for your future journals and you can take what you have left over and put it back into your stash and then later on you have unique pages for your next journal because imagine you would make like 20 journals and from every journal making process you have let's say three pages left over imagine the amount of leftover pages which are then like little treasures, like unique pages for future journals, and you can just take them out from your stash and use them, and they are ready to go. So for me, it's better to have more than not enough. So now I'm taking this just for a first, like, orientation, and I just throw everything on top of each other after I have folded it. And now you can, even if these are not signatures yet, you can just go and fold, uh, fold, flip through these things. And I know that this is not a journal yet, but you can get an imagination here. Look, when you see this, you can see, is it harmonious? Is it co cohesive? Is it too much? Or what is it? And you can see if you want to have a combination like that or not. And that is not only for everything that's laying here on the table. You, you not only can get a um, really good overview over everything and an idea about the vibe of the journal, but at the same time, you can also find already some combinations for, for example, pockets and other things here. For example, this. This city sleeve is by coincidence laying on this page. You have just seen that I've just randomly put everything together here. But when I see this, I can also see that this um, pocket here would be great on this page. And if I see this and I, if I think, okay, I want to consider if I really want to put the pocket here later, because this looks great, then I can just take a paper clip and clip this down here to remember that for later, because I will probably take this apart again and then, um, you know, work on the pages. And then it could happen that this goes into another, another place on my table or back into my mood board or whatever, so that I can't lose the idea 
I can clip it here and then later on I can put the CD sleeve as a pocket there. Whoa. Look. <laughs> I mean the red is okay, but this this green, what is that? Holy moly. Yeah, so you can do it either like this with the single pages or what you of course also could do is you could take this and build your signatures already. For that you take your papers and you just, you know, this is <clears throat> like so, then you can just put this in here and think, okay, this looks nice. I want to have that exactly like so. Then you can take perhaps another page, put this around here. And please don't ask me how many pages per signature you should use. <laughs> Do me this one favor. Yeah, please, please just don't ask me because that is totally depending on the thickness of your paper, um, on how many space you leave in between of these little bundles of paper. This is already in my eyes a lot. One, two, three, four, five papers here now folded in half this is feels already really thick and i also want to have in mind that i want to embellish my pages and that here are coming some pockets and belly bands and so on to the pages which add thickness and bulk don't make your signatures too thick otherwise you know i mean that is five is probably it sounds like not a lot but when you add the the embellishments it turns out really like not fat but it, it's getting more yeah <laughs> so this is yeah but um, I have also some videos on my channel where I explain how I decide if a signature is already too thick or if I can add more and I am sure that you already have seen some of those videos because I nearly I mean, when, when I show how I bind my journals, in nearly every video I talk about that. And I show you that. But I will show you that in a second here on this example again. And this will also probably not stay in this order. I like to do this really fast and like intuitively. But at the same time, I know that I also have more pages from the German video so that means I will probably take everything apart later and mix and match that in a different way because you know I have more material than this is and I want to have this really cool so but of course you have the possibility to change the order and uh, you should take this chance to change the order of the pages because that also gives like a nice training somehow to learn how to find the way you want to do this whole thing so let's say we have decided that these are our signatures let's put this out of the way for later of course you can do then the same thing i've just done lay that to your table and then flip through this whole thing this way you can probably imagine a little bit better how this thing would look in the very end because this feels already more like a journal than what I have just done with the single pages. And then you can go through this and think, okay, I want to leave this or I want to change the order and so on. And with that, you get a really nice first idea about this vibe and what you want to do next. And for finding out if you have enough pages or too many pages in the signature i mean i think the bigger question is do i have too much in my signature you can just take this and um, don't press with your hands but just hold them so um, that the pages can do what they want don't do this because that is not the reality later in your journal but just let them go where they want and when you have this, really, my hand is really loose, you know, I don't add pressure, then you can already see the distance between the signatures here in the end. And when you see, um, can you see that this is not the same distance? Here, it's approximately only 
a half of a centimeter and this is approximately a centimeter and this is a centimeter and this is not nice it's not equally spread it over the spine here yeah the the future spine and if this is small i know that i can probably add more to the last signature even if this was the one where i said this already feels really thick but let's try that let's add one more page do this again Ta -da. can you see that the distance now is bigger and that this is approximately the same distance like here and like here that's the trick and it's hard to show in the camera because when I do something like this, then of course this changes a little bit, but this is now more the same than it was before, isn't it? When I remove this, you can see it wants to go closer to the other signature, this one here, and that means you can add another page here because probably we will leave a centimeter in between of the signatures later when we bind this into the journal and you can see as long as this is not more than a centimeter approximately then everything is okay and if you another trick is you can put this to your table and look from here because when it lays on your table then there's also no pressure added here that means the pages are doing what they want here. And when I look from here now, then I can see that I um, have the same distance in between of the signatures and it's approximately the same like when I hold it here with no pressure and it's the same what I can see here. Whew, hopefully that uh, made some sense. <laughs> so I have my signatures here they will probably change and it can happen that i will add more signatures at the moment to be honest i don't know how many signatures my journal will get that is normal when i do something like this i never know uh, how many signatures uh, i will end up with so that is i think that is totally normal and you in my eyes you can't plan these things till the very end and sometimes it's also not so good to plan everything to the very end so um yeah <laughs> please don't ask me how many signatures i i do have in my journal in the end um or i will have in my journal in the end i can't talk today i don't know what's going on here in my brain today so that's it for today i hope you could get some inspiration from this have a very very fun time with playing around and trying different things and experimenting and see you the next time bye bye